Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Hey, welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, the podcast where I have the pleasure of simplifying the marketing and the mindset so you, the chiropractor, can increase your income, your impact, and your enjoyment in practice too. On the podcast today, I'm chatting with best-selling author of The One-Page Marketing Plan, Alan Dibb. Now, this is one of my absolute favorite marketing books. It's probably the one that I refer chiropractors more than any other because of its simplicity and because of the practicality of it also. Now, this is the second time I've had Alan on the show, and this show is absolutely chock full of gold nuggets. But there's one particular part of it that's been really stuck. I can't stop thinking about it. It's really stuck with me since I asked Alan, why is it that so many businesses, why is it that so many chiropractors really struggle with marketing? And this is what he said. He says, the marketplace is not a meritocracy. The most deserving chiropractors or the most deserving businesses are not the ones that get paid the most. He said, the best marketers are the ones that get paid the most. In essence, this is what I see a lot with chiropractors. Thinking that you can grow your practice just by being good is actually a recipe for disaster, okay? It means there are so many chiropractors out there that are brilliant at what they do, helping their patients get wonderful results, but they're not thriving in practice because they're missing a very important part of it, and that is marketing. Now, let me be clear. I'm not suggesting for one moment that you don't need to be amazing. I'm just suggesting that this is not enough to build a thriving practice. Now, if you'd like to learn how to implement a simple and highly effective marketing strategy, then today's episode is for you. Let's go chat with Ellen. Enjoy the show. Ellen Dibb, welcome to the Marketing Practice Podcast. How are you, my friend? Hey, Angus. Pleasure to be back on. How have you been? It, I've been wonderful. Thank you very much for asking. Um, and it's been a damn pleasure to continue to see from a distance the success of your book. Every time I go over to Amazon, um, it it's constantly seems to be sitting in amongst the best sellers there. The reviews come through. It's uh, Amazon continues to recommend it to me. I'm like, hey man, I've actually already bought multiple copies of this book. But if you I need, need to, to buy, buy more it, copies, yeah. Angus, yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. And um, I, I was looking through again your uh, uh, podcast episode. I, I think is within the top three of mine of of all time. So um, thank you for that. But I wanted to jump back on and see what's life been like for you um, as well. Why don't we? Um, for those of perhaps our listeners that haven't listened to our first episode, and I'll link that in the show notes as well, can you give a bit of your background and talk a little bit about the book, The One Page Marketing Plan? And let's go from there. Sure, sure. So uh, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The One Page Marketing Plan. It's been incredibly successful, as you mentioned, been a, a bestseller. But I think that the important thing is I'm not from a marketing background or a typical marketing background. I'm really... Uh, I started my business life as a dead broke IT geek, so I was very much on the tools. Um, and really, I learned marketing the difficult, expensive way through trial and error. So I spent probably about a decade and hundreds of thousands of dollars just trying to learn marketing. I attended every seminar, read every book, uh, connected with different coaches, and I got value from all of those. But there was nothing, certainly at the time, that I know of that in a holistic way took you from knowing nothing about marketing. And when I say knowing nothing in the, in the first chapter of the book, I literally define what is marketing mm -hmm. and then, um, and then uh, take you through a whole series of really understanding it at a deep level and having a very holistic view. So that's what, that's what I did. I really wrote the book for people like me. It was the book I wish I had when I was first learning marketing, where I, I had to learn it piecemeal, like taking little, what felt like a little jigsaw puzzle from this place, another piece of the jigsaw here from another piece of jigsaw, and then finally put the big picture together. And, and I think marketing is just way, way too difficult, uh, uh, you know, for, for most people. And uh, I think, especially for business owners who are running a practice, who are running a, uh, a business of any sort, uh, most of us don't get taught marketing in school. So you, you attend chiropractic school, they teach you five years worth of whacking and cracking backs, but they don't yes. they don't give you a single class on how to get a, a patient sit through the door. And and it's a tragedy. And that's that's why a lot of people struggle because they learn the technical thing of what they do in their business, but they don't learn how to get clients, patients and so on in the door. And that's a, that's a big problem. I think it almost goes as well, it did for me and I, and I don't know where this came from but I almost got taught anti-marketing and by yes. that somewhere it got inside my mind that the marketing strategy I should have was look after my patients and internal yes. referrals will build things and there's a, one of the reasons that you're 
on my mind constantly is I constantly share a quote of yours that says that internal referrals are like a free meal. They're great when they come along. Yeah. However, it's not a good way to um, a plan to feed your business. Now you say it a lot kind of cooler than that, but that's the essence. And I'm sharing that quote with chiropractors yeah. all the time. Where does where does that come from? Because I'm sure this idea of just look after your clients is not just for chiropractors. I'm sure you as an IT person thought to totally. man, but where does that come from? Totally, totally. Um, well, look, it came from, originally it came from a mentor of mine um, and I was in exactly that situation. I was like, man, I am awesome at IT. And really, I, I think I was probably within the top 5%. I was certified in everything. I would spend hours and hours and hours every week just training myself on the latest technologies. Even some of our competitors would sometimes hire me to just bring them up to speed on the latest tech. And then, um, so my skill level was like within the top 5% of my profession, I'm, I'm certain of that. But my revenue and my results and my income did not reflect that in any way, shape or form. And in fact, a lot of my competitors who were much, much worse than, than we were, and in fact, were hiring us to teach them the tech skills, um, they would run rings around us financially. And you know, there's there's nothing more frustrating in mm. life. I I think I don't know. Maybe maybe you have other frustrations, but to me, there's nothing more frustrating in life than when dumber people make more money than you. <laughs> so um, I mean, to, that's got to be one of life's most frustrating situations. Well, well, I know. I mean, my version of that was, you know, knowing that I was a better chiropractor, yeah. knowing that I helped my patients more, yeah. I got better results. And yet I could see these other practices that were growing faster, that had more yeah. stability, these chiropractors yeah. that had more income. That was a frustration for me too. Like, and I know there are many chiropractors out there and, you know, if I have been along to chiropractic seminars where they, we have just chanted as a mantra, you know, build it and they will come. Yeah. You know, again, another quote of yours too, which is, you know, great movie script, but just a lousy business strategy totally. as well. But from a, it sounds nice though. Like it sounds like in this fair and beautiful universe of ours, if we just look after people and if we just do that, then just the business will take care of itself. But man, I think that business strategy there has probably led to more bankruptcies than- totally anything else as well. Um, why don't we take it right back to definition? What is marketing? First of all, let's begin with that. And then let's overview the, uh, you know, the one page marketing plan. And then I've got some questions to kind of build on from, from there, if that's okay. Yeah. So, so, so just, just be, before we, we get into that, I, I, I want to really cl clarify this point where um, uh, the marketplace is not a meritocracy, right? So I wish that yes. the best and most deserving people in the world got paid the most, you know, that mm. nurses and fire, firefighters were the, the highest paid people in our professions, the chiropractors, people who change people's lives. I wish they were the highest paid people in our profession, but um, in life, it's, it's not a meritocracy. It's not uh, the most deserving people that get paid the most. And so, Something that that my mentor uh, taught me uh, was that the best marketer wins every time. Yeah. And I have found that to be true. Um, a good product, a good service, uh, delivering really well uh, for your uh, clients is super important as a retention strategy, right? Because if someone attends your practice and they have a terrible experience and your service doesn't work or whatever, well, you've got a retention problem. So you, you, they're not going to come back. They're not going to refer people to you and all of that. But before you think about retention, and retention is incredibly important. There's no point having a leaky bucket where you can't yes. getting clients or patients, or whatever, in the door. They're having a bad experience and never coming back, right? So that's, that's a problem. And you absolutely need to address that and make sure you've got a good product, good service. Um, but before retention, we need to think about client or patient acquisition you know how do we get people to walk in the door how do we get people to ring the phone how do we get people to inquire and so that's really what marketing about is about and marketing is the strategy that we use to uh to get people in the door the strategy that that we use for uh, so getting our ideal target market to know us, to like us, and to trust us so the definition i use in the book i and i use a little little kind of um uh, a little story to illustrate what marketing is. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out here. It says, if the circus is coming to town and you paint a sign saying circus coming to the showground Saturday, 
that's advertising. If you put a sign on the back of an elephant and walk it into town, that's promotion. If the elephant walks through the mayor's flower bed and the local newspaper writes a story about it, that's publicity. And if you get the mayor to laugh about it, that's public relations. If the town citizens go to the circus, you show them the many entertainment booths, explain how much fun they'll have spending money at the booths, answer their questions, and ultimately they spend a lot of money at the circus, that's sales. And if you plan the whole thing, that's marketing. So mm -hmm. again, to reiterate, marketing is the strategy that you use for mm -hmm. getting to your ideal clients or patients to know you, like you, and trust you enough to, to do business with you. So it encompasses all of those things because a lot of people get confused with what marketing is. They think it's about advertising or ads or pay-per-click or SEO or whatever. And it encompasses all of those things, PR, all of those, those kind of things. But really, it's the overall strategy that you use to get your ideal target market to know you like you trust you and do business with you mm. i think too one of the other things that somehow got embedded in my mind too was that marketing was ultimately getting people to do things that they didn't want to do yep. and that the outcome was ultimately better for me than it was for them and yeah. i realized that that's why i had just this like i don't want to do that like yeah. if that's what I have to do to grow my business, I'll just have a smaller business. Yeah. Like if I have to play that game. And then it wasn't really, you know, Seth Godin was really helpful for me here. Yeah. He has a long quote where he really talks about marketing being the ultimate act of service, that what yeah. we're doing is we're solving a problem. And he goes on to say that if you're not marketing, you're literally stealing. Yeah. And that I had to do a lot of work in around that because I think my early experience of marketers was, you know, as a uh, in my early twenties, going along to secondhand car dealers and mm. someone trying to force me into buying a car I didn't want. It was that person cold calling at dinner time for me. It was totally. these examples of it, yeah. and that's what I saw marketing as. But as you talked about before, it 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 doesn't have to be that way. In fact, it shouldn't be that way. Um, that marketing can be a beautiful thing, a lovely thing to experience along the way too. Yeah, I mean. I I think of it this way, Mar marketing is an incredibly powerful tool. And like many powerful tools, like a, a knife is a powerful tool, a gun is a powerful tool, um, a drill is a powerful tool, yeah. and uh, tools can be used for good or for bad, right? So you can use a knife to cook someone a beautiful meal, or you can use a knife to harm someone, right? And so uh, don't get the intention and the tool mixed up, right? So yes. yes. Of course, there have been some people who've used marketing in an unethical way or done some shady stuff, for sure, because it's a it's a powerful tool and powerful tools are attractive to both good actors and, and bad actors. But don't mix that up with, with uh, you know, rejecting the tool altogether or, or not using it for, for good. So if you've got a good product or a good service, you absolutely have an obligation, as you mentioned, to use this powerful tool to help as many people as possible, because no one... Um, uh, no, no one out there will know how good you are until they buy from you. And so your obligation is, is to get your, your, your services and your, uh, your name out there. And so that people know you like you and trust you and benefit from what you've got to offer. What have you learned over the last two years since selling um, a bucket load of books? And we'll talk a little bit about some of the trainings and certifications. What have you learned over the last two years to expand upon from when the book was written? Yeah, so uh, I did kind of uh, mention it in the book, but it's something that that's really uh, come to the fore, I think, over the last few years is that the most most of your gains um, in marketing and not just in marketing in business in life in general uh, are going to come from compound interest right so how do you get financially successful by uh, compound interest is incredibly powerful uh, and you know investing in your bank bank account investing in your investments um, think about getting fit right if I work out in the gym once a year, that's not really going to help me. I'm going to get those compound gains by going to the gym three, four times a week. Um, but it's going to compound. So initially it feels like almost nothing's happening. Like, so uh, the, yeah, and exactly the same as with marketing. So, hey, I've launched the new website. I've got that newsletter going weekly and all of that. And nothing seems to be happening. But the mm -hmm. gains come from compound interest by doing the daily, weekly, monthly stuff. That's how you win at the game of marketing. And just the same as 
you know, uh, how you win at the game of relationships, how you win at the game of finance, how you win at the game of business. It's through doing stuff consistently and letting it compound. You know, if I tell my wife I love her once a year and get her a nice gift and then ignore her for the rest of the year, probably not going to have a good relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it comes from the stuff we do daily. So it comes from the stuff we do weekly. It comes from the stuff we do monthly. Same with my finances. If I put a tiny bit of money in my investment account once a year, probably not going to uh, get wealthy from that. Um, if I work out once a year, probably not going to get uh, not going to get fit uh, from that. So the, the the gains really come from compound interest, and so I've just seen the power of that over and over, just in all realms of life. But in particular, when it comes to marketing, you know, I've seen uh, ordinary businesses with ordinary products just do just consistently do basic stuff with marketing and just have massive uh, success as a result of that. So often it's not um, coming up with this creative genius idea or whatever. Uh, it's really just doing the basic stuff on an ongoing basis. So just doing common stuff uncommonly well. Mm. In terms of a time frame, like if I was sitting here and said, okay, look, I'm going to do that exactly is there a time frame that I should expect before I can build that momentum? Is it six weeks, six months, six years? What, what? And I know there's a lot of variables in that, but how long would I need to keep this consistency up before I would start to see some return on investment? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of variables as you say, and it depends on on your goals and 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 what you want. And there are strategies that are shorter term strategies like for mm. example you might do paid ads and that's a much shorter term strategy we should start to see lead flow pretty quickly whereas something like an S seo would be maybe longer term where we're starting to see results over six or or 12 months but the 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 point is and you know for most clients i say look let's let's call this a 12 month project yes from the time that we start to start, you know, it's not, doesn't mean it's going to be 12 months with no results or whatever, but so that we start seeing reasonable traction, because uh, here's the thing with most clients, we're not, uh, we're usually having to kind of start the car, right? So uh, what I mean by that is some clients, like they just need a, they're doing a lot of things right already, but they just need a little bit of a tweak. So we're working with a car that's already in motion. We steer it left, we steer it right. That That's a lot easier. But a lot of small businesses, they don't have a marketing person to help them. So we've got to help them either recruit or upskill or train that person, or they don't have a CRM in place, or they, their website is just really an online brochure, not built mm. for lead flow and lead capture. So it takes time to put in that plumbing, that infrastructure. And then once we've got that in place, we do start to see traction reasonably quickly. And again, depends on the offer, depends mm. on price points and things like that. But really uh, what we want to do is we want to get some of the foundations in place because uh, too much of what I see in the marketing space is kind of these one-off little hack. Let's do this SEO trick that's going to help us get on page one or let's do this little hack or whatever or change the color of the button and whatever. But this is all kind of like uh, just window dressing. What we want to do is we want to fix the foundations. We want to, right, let's get a solid foundation. Let's get a daily, weekly, monthly practice going. Let's get uh, let's get a, the tools in place. So I, I talk about three major things. I talk about tools. I talk about assets and I talk about processes. So tools are things like your CRM system, your project management systems, your content management system, all of those sorts of things. Tools mm -hmm. can really help us get a lot of leverage, right? Just like physical tools, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot easier to uh, you know to build uh, to build a house when you've got you know amazing tools where you've got something to dig the foundation or whatever, where where you're not just doing one shovel at a time, right? So tools can help us get a lot of leverage. Assets. Assets are the thing that we spend the most time uh, from a marketing perspective. So, um, and I don't really cover this in the book. I'm going to cover this in my next book, but uh, I talk about uh, building marketing assets. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you own a house, you can derive dividend, you can derive rental income. If you own stocks, you can get dividend income. If you own marketing assets, you can get lead flow prospects, clients coming to you in the absence of assets, you're going to have to replace that with labor, with hard work. So, and exactly the same as in the, in the real world, right? If I haven't, you know, how do you get financially free and wealthy? 
because you generally get income from your assets. So I own a, a whole bunch of assets. Maybe I own a, a real estate portfolio. And from that, I generate a lot of rental income or I generate a lot of dividend income from my stock portfolio. That's how you build uh, wealth. Well, exactly the same with, with marketing. And if I don't have that dividend portfolio or that uh, 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 that stock portfolio or that real estate portfolio, the only thing that I can do to generate income is my labor, right? And so I'm then exchanging time for money and I'm generating income through my labor, which is fine. In the beginning, everybody's, uh, you know, most people, unless they've had a had some good luck or an inheritance or whatever, we start with generating income with labor and that's totally fine. But as early as possible, we want to we want to get to a situation where we're using assets to generate income. And so the exact same thing is true of marketing. If we don't have good marketing assets in our business, the way that we generate lead flow prospects in our business is through labor. It's through cold calling or cold emailing or running running ads or doing things that are difficult, expensive, time consuming. And yes. that's where most businesses kind of just uh, stay, right? They don't yes. move to, to the assets component. And uh, would an asset be, is it an email list is an asset? An email list is absolutely an asset. So yes. So right now I've got a list, uh, an email list of tens of thousands of people who've read my book, know me, like me, trust me. And so when I go to launch a product, I have a very high degree of success versus if I had no marketing assets there, I would be like, all right, uh, I need to cold call, I need to uh, run ads or whatever. Another asset in my business is, for example, my book. Mm. The reason that we're we're on here on this podcast, mm. and I'm invited onto podcasts literally every week to tell my story, to talk uh, to talk to people. I'm invited to speak because of an asset that I've got in my business, mm. which is which is my book. Super super powerful. So um, uh, the the funnels that that people go through. So let's say someone goes onto my website and opts in. Um, they're going to be invited to join one of our programs. They're going to be uh, there's going to be a system there that uh, nurtures them over time. And again, that's a very very powerful asset in my business. So we spend a lot of time with clients in building those assets. A podcast, what you're doing right now, yeah, a podcast. That's an mm -hmm. asset. So somebody who who looks at your uh, consulting, your services, and uh, learns from from it either from a podcast or maybe they didn't learn from it from a, from the podcast. They learned it from, from it elsewhere, but they go to check you out. Like, and they see this library of podcast people that you've interviewed. You're now positioning yourself as a, as a thought leader, very, very powerful asset. So more and more, the, the value of assets is incredibly important in a marketing context, because I think the days of where we run some cheap ads, interrupt some people and get some clients, they're, they're long gone. So now people are looking at what, what you're doing on social, on YouTube, on podcasts, or, uh, books, uh, whatever else. And I'm not saying you have to do all of that stuff, but what are the assets that you've got in your business? Even if it's just as simple as an email list, it's an incredibly powerful mm -hmm. asset. Yeah. I, I've been talking a lot recently about some of the Google work with their zero moment of truth and what it takes for kind of connection. Yeah. They talked about their the kind of numbers... 7, 11, and 4. And they said, on average, it took seven hours of interactions. That was best to not happen in one kind of, you know, me to do mm -hmm. it all at once. It was best to happen over 11 different interactions. Yeah. And then ideally over four locations. So whether that be from your book to a website, to social, to an email, yeah. is what from billions of bits of data, they were able to put that together. What I find interesting from that, even if we look at that as being partially true, most chiropractors don't have seven hours worth of stuff that I could consume. You know, if I read yep. every bit of text on your website, um, it might take me an hour. Um, and then if I jumped over into your socials, there's this uh, inconsistent sort of message that you're putting out there. So, you know, this idea of, of, of assets, um, you know, I think every time somebody creates a video, that's an asset. I'm totally. I, I've got tomorrow, it'll be a sales call with somebody trying to pitch me on their product. But it's interesting in in the process of it, I've been doing a deep dive into them and I have probably consumed two hours of their content. So I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to go into this. These are all assets that they kind of have there as well. What are, what are the biggest challenges that you see 
with people implementing this so that, you know, they've read the book, they've got it all there. What are the challenges they have? Biggest challenges we we see is uh, just time, like and and being the wrong person to implement. Like um, most business owners, so uh, I'm sure that's true of yourself. It's certainly true of me. It's certainly true of most of my clients. They're just the wrong personality to be implementing this stuff. So um, you know, in traction, and I mean, there's some other frameworks they talk about the the visionary and the implementer, right? Mm -hmm. And they're two very, very different mindsets. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare, incredibly rare to have someone who's both a very good visionary and an implementer. And most entrepreneurs tend to be that visionary person. And the visionary mm -hmm. person is awesome because they come up with amazing ideas. They care deeply about the business, about their clients. They have vision. Um, they're willing to take risks and do all of that sort of stuff. You need that person. But they're usually a terrible implementer. A lot of times they've got stuff half done or 80% done. Mm -hmm. um, they they will start a project, not finish it. Um, they'll get excited about something, get it going, and ne never put in the processes and tools to, to get it going. And so they're kind of really stuck because they, they have all these ideas and they get bored very easily. They're the person who's putting out fires and all that. And so, like, if I look at my business, um, yeah, I, I, I get on camera and I do the podcast, I go speaking, I do a lot of the the kind of fun stuff um, and the important stuff as well, right? Like, it's very, very, it's a very important part of thought leadership. But if it was left up to me to edit the video, send the emails, um, copy and paste this and that, do all the tech stuff. It just wouldn't get done because, uh, you know, I, I would do it maybe once, twice, three times, get bored of it. Uh, something else comes up that needs my attention. I drop it. And so I need the, I need the t people in my team who are good at doing the implementation stuff, who are who are like kind of my stage crew. Like, you know, like I went and saw you two, you two in concert uh, a few years ago. And, you know, um, the crew spends days and days putting together the lights, the stage, the tuning the drums, tuning the guitars, getting everything ready, getting all the lights uh, rigged up. Bono, Bono comes on, does his thing for an hour or two and then pisses off. And then and then the, the crew are, are now uh, disassembling all of the stuff and and uh, and moving all that off. Like, you know, if it was left up to Bono to set up the stage to do all of, all of that background, well, it probably wouldn't get done. Right. So you really want to be the Bono in your business, not the it's very, very difficult to be the Bono and the crew. Right. So you, you need that team. Business is a team sport. And you're probably not going to win uh, just doing it alone. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, they have Superman syndrome, right? If there's a problem, mm -hmm. I'll solve it. You know, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. I'll do that. I'll fix that problem or whatever. But, uh, you know, probably uh, that might be work once, twice, three times, but that's going to be very difficult to sustain over a long period of time. And so you need to build that team. Business is a team sport. You, you, it's going to be incredibly difficult for you to win alone. And is if you were to kind of rewind back to when you were in the early days with your IT business yep. and already I'm having a hard time getting in new clients and now you want to tell me to employ another person, I can barely pay my own wages at the yep. moment. Where does the balance fit in with that? Is there a time at the beginning, you know, I like the idea you either pay with your time or you pay with your money, but either way yep. you're going to pay. So yep. is, is, is that idea of the right person saying, look, I've got to look at where my business growth is or my maturity rather than, than it's, its growth? Or is that one of those things that says, look, at the beginning, suck it up. It's going to feel like you're going a little bit negative to begin with, but it will will help. Yeah. So, so look, uh, so now, like as an example in my business, I've got 12 people who just run my marketing machine. Now, for most people, they're like, you know, we, we, we couldn't possibly do that. We're just starting out. We're a chiropractor, whatever. And I just say, look, how about we do this? Um, could you uh, pay somebody to come in two hours a week just to do your, their, and their, they've only got one job. Their job is to, on a Monday morning, send an email newsletter to your clients. So they spend two hours putting together the email newsletter, whatever. Mm -hmm. So can we create that as a process? Now, how much, how much would it cost to get someone in for two, three hours uh, a week? You know, I think most chiropractors, pretty much almost any small business could yeah. afford some, something like that. And let's see how that goes as a process. So let's make that a process where 
Now, every Monday, Jenny's coming in, she's sending an email newsletter to, to your clients and it's off your plate. So it's 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 now handled. Or maybe it's got some input from you. You're telling her, hey, mention this, mention that or whatever. But she, mm. generally, she's putting that together. Great. So now we have a process started. And then we might say, you know what? That's working really, really well. Let's add another process. Mm. How about, um, you know, we spend an hour with Jenny uh, every week and we record five uh, short form videos just yes. re, you know she's just with her phone and we we just have a, a, a record five videos and throughout the week we're just going to release that on our social platforms on tiktok on instagram or whatever right so and jenny will do the editing and the uploading or, or whatever so we might pay her a few more hours now we've got two marketing processes going in our business we're sending email newsletters Mm. And we're now populating our social platforms with short form uh, video. So, and that's how we that, that's how we build that marketing machine. Then we stack the third third thing. We figure out, okay, what's the next low hanging fruit? Would it be a good idea if we appeared as a guest on podcasts, uh, say once a month or twice a month or something like that? Cool. All right. Well, how do we do that? Well, we want to reach out to relevant podcasts. So we've got to build a list of relevant podcasts and an outreach email or whatever. And we add a third process. So. That's how you win at the game of marketing. And it doesn't have to, you don't need a super genius. You don't need someone super expensive. You don't need someone even full-time. Just start with one thing that you know you should be doing right now in your business. You know you should be doing that thing, but you just, you never get to it. You're not good at it. Um, it just doesn't happen because you, you're putting out fires all day. You're working with patients. You're dealing with vendors. You're all of this sort of stuff. And just make that some someone's job. Uh, where they just come in for a couple of hours or whatever, get that thing done. So get one thing going, get another thing going, another thing going. And before you know it, you will start uh, getting a return on that and you will be able to invest more in your team, more in your tools, more in your processes. And that's how it snowballs. So that's exactly what I did in my current business. I started with one person, hired a copywriter just to help me with some copy. Then that expanded. Then I hired a tech guy, then hired this, 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 and that. And, and so now I've got a team of 12 people in my marketing team. And, and that continues to snowball and expand as we get more runs on the board. It's, um, it pertinent question there too and as you're answering that it's, it's so funny because you know I'm ready for some next staff uh, support as well but f I don't have enough work there for it to be somebody that's full-time yep. and that's what's and it's so obvious now I'm like then just employ somebody for 15 hours because you've yep. got 15 hours of work there for totally. them but um and the same is true for chiropractors I'm here now like of course like yes we can get a helper in but for two hours and it's quite possible you know, that the helper is your a staff member that's already there, who's already working for you. It's your CA, your chiropractic assistant. Totally. They're answering the phone, they're doing that thing. And if you said to them, hey, would you like a couple of extra hours? Many of them will say, hell yes. Totally. Um, you know, and how way. many, how many, you know, moms are there in the, who uh, would like a little bit of a side hustle? Maybe they've got kids, yes. they drop them off at, at, at uh, care or whatever in the morning. So they've got maybe four or five hours uh, that they could do some work from home or from your for, from your office. A lot of them are very well educated. They've yes. uh, had a university degree or something like that. And they just want a little bit of a uh, little bit of flexible work environment where they, they can make a little, you know, uh, get away from, you know, mom brain or whatever, and, and just think about something else for a bit and make a little bit of money on the side. There's tons of those people who, who would love that, that kind mm. of flexible work arrangement and they're perfect. Uh, um, you, as I said, you don't need a marketing genius. You just need someone who can write because yes. a lot of uh, marketing comes down to writing, whether it's video or, or, or written form, someone who's not afraid of using a tech tool. So like a CRM system or whatever, yes. or happy to work it out. Yeah. And, and just someone who'll, who'll just get stuff done, you know? Um, and so you, we don't need a marketing genius. We just need someone who can just follow simple instructions, willing to work something out and, and can, can write reasonably. Yeah, a great suggestion. And I would encourage our chiropractors with this too. You've got a patient database of people that if you were just to ask them, pop a, a newsletter up at the front desk, say, look, we're looking for support in this area. It's remote work. It's this, I bet you've got somebody, if it's not a staff member, you're already employee. I mean, you don't need to be going to, you know, employment advertising agencies sure. and stuff like this to find somebody to um to help with that too.
For sure, or even just in your uh, in your local community notice board or the the digital equivalent. Like there are Facebook groups often for the local community or whatever. I, I will often like um, if I need someone who to do something, or whatever. I need a a painter. I need a uh, you know a dog walker or whatever. I'll just do a post in my local community Facebook group. Hey, looking for a dog walker to walk my dog three times a week or whatever. And you know I'm usually overwhelmed with responses and. and and, you know, like I said, nine times out of 10, it's usually stay at home moms who just want to get away, get away for, for a bit and make a little bit of money on the side. And, and that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Um, as your business has grown, I noticed now that <clears throat> the one page marketing plan now has uh, in-person training and digital trainings and through yep. the certifications. Tell us a little bit about those and where are they helpful and who are they helpful for? Yeah, so we've got a couple of programs. So we we do a one-page marketing plan course, which is basically taking the concepts of the book, but really, hey, ha here's how you implement them yourself in your business. And that's a do-it-yourself uh, mm -hmm. course. You can watch it on your own time. And um, uh, we've had awesome results with that. Uh, some people who want to really accelerate their results, we run a marketing certification program. And so a lot of business owners will put their someone in their team, so one of their staff through our certification program. So it's an intensive 12-week program where we take someone through implementing marketing in a business um, and uh, helping you become a thought leader because realistically, whether you're a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, a chiropractor, whatever, we all need to become now thought leaders in our businesses because uh, the old way of marketing is just interrupting people with ads is getting difficult and very expensive to do. So uh, you, you want to become known as an expert in your niche. And so we take people through a 12-week intensive certification program to help mm -hmm them learn those uh, skills on how to become a really, really good marketer and become a thought leader in your space. And um, so that's been incredibly su successful. People have loved that. Um, like I said, a lot of business owners will put one of their, their team members through that uh, because that team member can then go and implement a lot of the marketing uh, in their business. And we also have a very successful coaching program for people who want you know, one-on-one -on -one personalized help with what they're doing. Um, we've got a team of coaches who are just awesome. And we've got experts in social media, experts in PR, experts in all, all aspects of, of marketing. And so um, that's the the one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So between those three things, uh, uh, we've got most uh, angles covered. And um, yeah, I'm really, really proud of the programs that we've developed and just seeing the transformations in uh, people going from kind of not having a clue what to do with marketing to, hey, I'm getting these these amazing results. So um, we've had stories of people doubling, tripling, quadrupling uh, revenue and profits. And um, it's incredibly satisfying because I want to be part of the movement that helps people grow businesses and help businesses succeed because it's it's too difficult and the school system just doesn't help you the school system helps you become a technician but the school system doesn't help you become a good entrepreneur or a good marketer mm. what's next you talk about uh, a, a new book that's in the making uh, what is that going to be about yeah so it's it's basically going to be the the next book in the series so the first book really talks about uh, structure a lot ar around how to put together your marketing plan, how to think through marketing and messaging and media. And, and that's all really, really important. The second book is going to be really about tools, tactics, implementation. So a lot of what we cover in our coaching program, is going to be in that, in that second book. So really, how do we actually get the, the, the stuff done? So, uh, and also, uh, uh, the stuff that we've learned throughout our coaching program, seeing what the biggest roadblocks, the biggest issues that people encounter in, in marketing that we've seen over the years, we're going to be feeding that back into the book. So I'm really excited. I'm working on that daily and, and I'm hoping um, to have it released uh, mid next year. Oh, that'll be very exciting. And please yeah. reach out when, um, when that time comes. I will for if, sure. If somebody's interested in the certification in terms of investment of time, 
what do they need to kind of put in on a weekly basis? Because yep. something's kicking off. Next one is in January 20. Next one's in January. Yeah. So yeah. We, uh, we it's a cohort based program. Yeah. So uh, we uh, and next one's kicking off in January. So we only run them about three times a year. So um, next one next one kicks off in January. Um, it's a twelve week program. Uh, we there's probably an hour or two of homework that you need to do each week, um, and then we have live calls where you can ask questions you've got roadblocks something's not making sense and then online between calls you can ask questions either of myself or one of our team or one of our coaches so look it's not um in terms of the stuff that you need to do you could absolutely go deeper you 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 know there are some people who dive in and spend hours and hours and hours learning each week and preparing for it Um, and there are people who just basically go through the program and and they spend maybe two or three hours uh, a week and just go through that program and and it's totally fine um, we understand life and business get in the way sometimes people fall behind and there's really no falling behind because you can do a lot of the modules on your own time you you know if you mm. need more than the 12 weeks to do it you just do it do do it at your own pace but you can still join the calls you can still ask questions so um, we found that really really good so it is a cohort based program but you can also do a lot of it in your over a longer period of time should you need to. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Love it. Where is the best place, first of all, for our listeners, if they haven't got a copy of the book, for them to go and get a copy of the book yeah. and for them to kind of keep in touch with you so they can um, hear about when the new book comes out, maybe if they're interested in the certification, where should they go? Yeah, perfect. Uh, so the book is wherever good books are sold, so <laughs> so about, probably Amazon uh, these days, mostly. The book is very, very popular on audio. So uh, I've been uh, surprised by that. So a lot of people, it's, it looks like, uh, prefer listening rather than reading, which is totally fine. So the, mm-hmm. the book is on Audible um, if you want to listen to it. Um, our website is successwise.com, uh, where we talk about all of the programs, all of the things, and you can just even if you don't ever buy anything, you can just uh, join our mailing list and get a lot of marketing tips that that we send out on a regular basis. And if you specifically want to join our January uh, certification cohort, you can check that out on the website. Or if you like, you can shoot me an email directly and I'll I'll, I'll put you in touch with someone in, in my team. My email address is alan, A-L-L-A-N, at successwise.com. So feel free to shoot me an email and uh, I can put you in touch with the right people to hook you up uh, for January certification. Love it. Alan, thank you. It's a pleasure to chat with you um, again. I'm excited for the new book. Have you got a title yet or is that still a work in progress? Uh, Still a work in progress. Uh, It's definitely going to keep the one page marketing plan series. So uh, I'm going to make that a series of book because it's essentially become a brand of its own. So it'll be called the one page marketing plan. And then we'll we'll see what the subtitle will be. So uh, that's it. Well, I, I look forward to seeing your continued success. You have such a wonderful, matter of fact, straightforward way of simplifying marketing. It doesn't surprise me that you wrote the book called The One Page Marketing Plan there as well. Um, I'd love to have you back when the new book um, is out in the new year. And perhaps we can talk about that and see if we can get that in the uh, some more hands also. That'd be amazing. It's been a pleasure to be on. Thanks to connect again, Angus. Great to see you, buddy. Have a, um, a, 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 an enjoyable rest of day. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out my Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work with you to help you apply it, implement it and systemize it. The Community Influencer Group Coaching Program is designed to help you increase your practice income, impact and enjoyment. Join me over at angusPike.com forward slash join. That's angusPike.com forward slash join. Join. I'd love to see you there.